in Pittsburgh feeling much better after two wins in Atlanta. The Pirates possess one of the best players in the league and lead with a veteran pitcher off to a great start. Ryan Zimmerman returns to the lineup and Ross Detweiler is on the mound to help the Nats keep the line moving. It's amazing how two days for a ball club can change the whole atmosphere. Welcome to PNC Park in Pittsburgh, a place filled with tradition, but also some curly W's. Not that far from D.C. is the Berg in western Pennsylvania. Nats now 6-7 and seven on the road, and the Pirates have been good at home, 8-4. and four. Bob and F.P., welcome to the weekend, Washington at Pittsburgh. And it's so good to have Ryan Zimmerman back in the lineup. And in the odd stat department, he's still one of the league le or rather the team leaders in RBIs, even though he's been gone for a couple of weeks. Well, you talk about his presence alone. He's ready to call him up. He went down to Potomac, 0 for 3. But as you know, with Ryan in spring training, doesn't need a lot of at-bats to get ready. But the four-hole hitter is back. Ryan Zimmerman gives some depth to the diamond. Now Adam LaRoche is back batting fifth. Ian Desmond batting second tonight, so just having that guy back around and having his presence is a big deal. All right, wrapping up that series in Atlanta, Jordan Zimmerman and Dan Heron, they go 17 innings and give up one run to some really good hitters. And we talk about it all the time. Last year, these guys fed off each other, keep the line moving, and for Jordan Zimmerman, get this, right-handed hitters hitting 156 against them this year, left-handed hitters hitting 179, and on the road, they're hitting just 133, and how about Dan Heron last night, just the mound presence. I mean, the stuff was there, but I feel like the last couple of starts, you're seeing the Dan Heron that Mike Rizzo went out and got because the confidence is there, the mound presence is there, the swagger's back. When things go wrong, he just gets back up on the mound and throws the ball. And now it's Ross Derweiler's turn tonight against the Pirates. Yeah, Ross has been so good last time, knocked around a bit. But in his first four starts, he had gone either six or seven innings every time. Now, when the Nats play the Bucks, we know who's waiting, Andrew McCutcheon. He's 25 years of age, off to a slow start at 238, but a 15-game hitting streak against the Nats. Then there's the 20-year-old Bryce Harper. Hasn't seen much of Pittsburgh pitching, but he's punishing everybody else at 323. In City, Maryland. Visit OCOcean.com, click on Lucky Summer of 13 for special deals and discounts. And by Dentaquest, it reminds you to smile, it's Friday. 
affordable coverage for priceless smiles. Ask your broker about DentaQuest. Well, talking to some of the guys who work at the ballpark, it's one of the nicest days of the baseball season right across the river from the Golden Triangle tonight. PNC Park, just a lovely setting for Major League Baseball and train celebrating its 100th anniversary by offering irresistible financing. It's hard to stop a train really hard. So it's 76 low humidity. There is a bit of a breeze blowing in the ballpark tonight coming in from left field. And the Pirates, as mentioned, have been pretty good against the East. They're six and two at home. They're eight and four. The Nats starting a lineup brought to you by Mazda. We believe that if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. Adam LaRoche, of course, a longtime Pittsburgh Pirate, and he has had some success against A.J. Burnett. A home run, 6 of 18. Some of the other Nats, like Denard Spann and Kurt Suzuki, who saw a lot of Burnett in the American League, have pretty good numbers against him as well. A.J. Burnett's won 139 career games. It's his 15th start against the Montreal Washington franchise, and he is 7-3. And, and last time out on April 27th at St. Louis, got the 5-3 win, gave up two runs on five hits over six innings, struck out six, walked three through 111 pitches, 67 of those for strikes. So fastball, curveball change is what the Nats will see from Burnett tonight. Set the defense for the Buckos behind Burnett. Marte McCutcheon Inge in the outfield. Barmas Alvarez on the left side. Mercer Sanchez on the right side. Mar Russell Martin doing the catching. I guess you could call him Muscle Martin. He's got <laughs> six home runs on the year. And, and everybody in Pittsburgh talking about his leadership qualities, his presence, and how he's affected not only the staff, but all the team in the clubhouse and getting it done here early. And we're going to talk about the hitting adjustments he's made to lock it in. Yeah, he's also throwing out 44% of opposing base runners. Right up there with a guy like Yadier Molina in the numbers of that department. Well, the Nats have a healthy, feeling good, and very efficient leadoff man right now. Denard Spann all over the bases in Atlanta last night. Got the game off to a good start. Got a couple of big RBIs. He was three for four with two doubles and a walk. And they seemed a little bit more aggressive last night. The swing with a little more force behind it. Sometimes he'll get into that feeling for the ball in the opposite field mode like you saw right there, but I saw a, a more aggressive Denard Span swinging hard and you see the results and he goes, they go. It's that simple. He gets on, they're a tough club to beat. So Span will step in hitting 292 on base percentage of 364. Twelve walks, 16 strikeouts. Talked about the American League guys who've seen a lot of Burnett, and there's James Hoy, sixth year, behind the plate. And the first pitch of the ball game is right in there. We're underway in Pittsburgh at 7:08. But Span seven of 21 with a walk against AJ Burnett, but Burnett has struck him out eight times. A little bit outside. And Burnett, a guy will move that fastball around. He'll start it early in the count away. He'll come in late. At this point in his career, he's learned how to pitch. Early on, he was just a power guy. Throw the ball right by you, but he'll throw that curveball, a big sweeper. He's got different arm angles. He'll change speeds on his fastball, throw 187, 193. Got a good idea of what he's doing this late in his career. That one's a little bit inside. Two balls, one strike. Yeah, and now he's become one of the more really valuable and durable starters. He hasn't made fewer than 31 starts over the last five years. 31 here in Pittsburgh where he won 16 games last year. And that one will run to the outside corner. Good heater and the counts two and two. Nats by the way batting average down to 230 as a team. The Marlins at 229. The only team in the National League with a lower batting average. We hope Ryan Zimmerman's return will get those numbers back on the rise as this team tries to string together a lot more hits. Target way in there. Span will get a piece of it to stay alive. You get a feel for what he's trying to do early. Just moving that fastball around. He's a guy that will save that curveball changeup combination for maybe the second time around. But he doesn't throw the change very often. Just 4% of the time. So what you're looking at basically is a two-pitch guy. The 
League only hitting 211 against him. ERA of 2.83 in his first six starts. He goes off speed with a breaking ball. Good take by Denard Spann. And here he is again, first at bat of a ball game and helping his teammates see everything the opposing pitcher has. What new? Three and two, Denard Spann. Every night seems like, right? Let's just put three and two on the board when he gets in the box and save everybody some time. Good ballpark for left handed hitters, but you can't sit there and try to pull everything down the line where it's only 320. A payoff pitch to the first batter of the game, and Span will stay alive again. In fact, he got himself with that one. And every once in a while, Denard Span will really get around a pitch. You remember the last homestand when he fouled a ball over Davy Johnson's head into the third deck, and that was a similar swing right there. Got around that fastball in the inner half and you're going to walk that thing off. And the best thing you could do right here as a hitter is take your time. Don't feel like you need to be rushed to get back in that box. Some guys will rush back in there and it starts to rush the at bat. Make sure you're 100% before you jump in there and dig in. Yeah, that got him flush right on the top of the foot. Didn't get the ground first, which is what you're hoping for in a foul ball like that. They play him to pull on the infield slightly the other way in the outfield. And another 3 2 pitch. Span will be called out as A.J. Burnett gets 94 to the inside corner. Well, you see, he's only a two pitch guy, but the way he commands his fastball, a lot like Ross Detweiler, moves it around. And just a challenge fastball in the inner half at 94. A little reach back piece right there might have locked Denard Span up. Well, next up is Ian Desmond. I mean, wherever Davey Johnson bats him, he just gets hits. Another one last night. Desmond has a nine game hitting streak. He's 12 for his last 34. And earlier in his career, he would hit first or second on occasion. Well, there's a streak there in, I think, 2011 where he let off all the time. I remember, he was one of the first pitch of the game. <laughs> So then, well, there's different ways to lead off. You can take pitches and try to get on, pack your way on. I think you see the same thing with Starling Marte, the Pirates leadoff hitter, not your prototypical leadoff guy. He's got some yeah. pop and he goes up there hacking. Yeah, he's hit three homers. He's walked seven times. Desmond only three times all year. It's a one two count no swing John Hirschbeck 30 year veteran crew chief will have the plate tomorrow when Steven Strasburg goes for the Nets. And a one two to Desmond with a target away and A.J. Burnett probably got more of the plate with that than he wanted. That's supposed to be away it was up and in and that's right where Ian Desmond likes. Defensive swing to stay, say the least, as Russell Martin set up up and in. That's right where A.J. Burnett gave it to him. Now Bryce Harper, everything he went through in Atlanta really didn't miss much time at all. And that'll be outside. Desmond will work a count long now. Two balls, two strikes. Fastball and two taken strike threes by Span and Desmond to start the game. Well, early returns after two hitters. If you're facing AJ Burnett tonight, you got to pick a side of the plate because he'll eat you up if you just look for a pitch. I mean, you got to look in a location and stick with it and not flip flop your game plan in the middle of an at bat. And if you're going to look in, look in all night. If you're going to look away, look away all night because he'll drive you nuts with the way he's moving that fastball. 
to a corner. Bryce Harper one for four career against Burnett as he steps in. Batting 323. Hard breaking ball at 84. And A.J. Burnett in a position to strike out the side. I see him that fastball in and got him aware of the heater on the inner half and then pulled the string right there at 83 with the curve. Target in. That's a breaking ball and Harper hits a two hopper to Jordy Mercer, just activated today to replace Neil Walker. And a 1 2 3, top of the first for A.J. Burnett. Ninth in the league and hitting a 243, eighth in runs, fifth in home runs, and Andrew McCutcheon really hasn't gotten off to a great start at all. That's a lot of Gabby Sanchez when he was with the Marlins. He'll hit for some power. He's had eight RBIs in his last six games, 16 on the year, batting 245 and playing first base for the Bucks. So Ross Detweiler will face that lineup. It's his third career start against Pittsburgh. He's 0-1. With a 4.09 coming off his roughest outing of the year when the Reds got him for three earned runs, 11 hits in five innings. Yeah, that was last time out on Sunday against the Reds. Took the 5 to 2 loss. That was the game that Tony Singrani struck out 11 national hitters. He was on his game. Not good defense behind Ross in his last outing. So, three pitch guy, fastball, curveball change through the fastball 93% of the time last time out against the Reds. The 11 hits he gave up, 10 were singles. <laughs> well, here's a guy who's looking interesting at the age of 24. Outfielder from the Dominican, Starling Marte. He leads the league in hits with 36. And as FP mentioned, a lot of pop in his bat. Deadwater goes one ball, one strike. Over his last two games, he's four for 10, homering in each game and driving in five runs. There was a two year period 2011 and 12 when he was rated the number four Pittsburgh prospect after they signed him at the age of 18 six years ago. By the way his on base percentage for a leadoff man 387. And Deadweiler takes a little bit off showing a little off speed stuff here to the first batter of the game. Well, Marte's a guy that in the past has chased out of the strike zone. Clint Hurdle talking about this year how he's locked in his strike zone more. He's a guy that when he swings at strikes makes contact as much as anybody in baseball. But the last two years the problem was chasing out of the zone. This year not so much. Detweiler goes fastball. So he follows up the off-speed pitch with a fastball 93 
upstairs, which probably looked a lot hotter than that. Like I said, when he swings, he makes contact. Nailed that one. <laughs> Let's set the defense for the Nats right now behind Ross Detweiler. Harper span more in the outfield. Desmond Zimmerman on the left side. Espinosa LaRoche on the right side. And Kurt Suzuki doing the catch. And the band is back together on the infield. And Bryce Harper back in left field tonight. And Davey Johnson and putting out there because there is a lot of room to cover here at PNC in left field. Oh, yeah. You better have a fast left fielder and center fielder in this ballpark. This is 26-year-old Jordy Mercer, recalled by the Pirates today. He had 210 in 42 games here last year, and he got called up because Neil Walker with a cut finger got spiked in St. Louis the other day, and he went on the DL. Mercer was an All-Big 12 three times at Oklahoma State, and they put him right in the number two spot tonight against a pitcher he's never seen before. Your brother got him, Matt Carpenter. Neil Walker on the double play. Jumped up in the air, landed on his hand and stitches, and the DL was next. Yep. Two balls and a strike to Mercer. And a check swing. He was fooled on that 2 2. And if there's one MO we're seeing, seeing early in this game tonight, Russ Detwiler is kind of unpredictable on his pitch selection so far. Well, he's commanding the outer half, and that's what he didn't do last time against the Reds. That's his bread and butter when he can command the outer third to right handers and turn that little 93 mile an hour sinker over and establish that and you have to dive out there to protect then that sets up the fastball in last time he didn't have that command tonight so far so good three balls and two strikes and a ball pretty well hit out to center Denard Spann's going to turn one way and then just relaxing turning the other way to make that play Good guy to retire with McCutcheon coming up. It's after Lowe's scouting report. Never stop improving. The tough get going. Check it out. Runners on. Ross Detweiler with runners in scoring position. 226 average. Nobody on. 355 left out. The Pirates this year hitting 193 against left-handed starters and 0 for Central. Ross Detweiler 0 for 6 career against the NL Central. Looking to change that here tonight. Andrew McCutcheon. Very uncharacteristic start. He had 327 last year with a 400 on base percentage and drove in 96 runs. Stole 20 bases as well. And we were talking about this an hour ago. It is probably 2010, the last time he's played a game against the Nationals without a base hit. A 15 game hitting streak, and he's hitting 442 career against our pitching staff. Well, it seems like a guy that never made it out against the Nationals last year. They caught him early in the season when he was locked in. This year, yeah. not so much. He's hitting just 193 against left-handers so far this season. All started with that three-homer game he had here a couple of years ago. And look what he does again. That's not coming back. And all Andrew McCutcheon needs to see is a gray Washington uniform. one nothing Pirates. So make that a 16 game hitting streak against the Nats. 29 for 57. And by the way, he's now four for four career against Ross Detweiler, first home run. Well, he's always been a great fastball hitter. There's so much power and explosion in his swing. Not a lot to it. Just gets his foot up and down quick and lets it fly. So much bat speed created right there and all over that Ross Detweiler fastball. One nothing Pirates. Pirates 30th home run of the year. They're in the top five in the league in that department. And Gabby Sanchez expecting first pitch fastball goes up hacking. So McCutcheon's fourth of the year RBI number 17. Sanchez hit 241 here last year. After the Marlins demoted him to triple A hitting a buck 97 in 36 games in Miami and this ball is drilled to right field. All Tyler Moore can do is play the carom and the Pirates suddenly dialing some long distance at PNC Park. And it's funny about you saying that McCutcheon just seeing the Nationals uniform. I watched his batting practice today and it was not impressive. And a guy that got four hits the other night against the Brewers starting to lock it in talking about McCutcheon and it's Sometimes you just need to see that team that your confidence is high against just to get going. 
McCutcheon right there showing what he's done for the last two or three years against the Nats and Gabby Sanchez with a good swing as well. Here's Russell Martin. One for three career against Detweiler and batting a robust 274 with six home runs. Ian Desmond will grab that one and fire it over to Adam LaRoche and the bottom of the first is over. Ryan Zimmerman is back. He will lead off top of the second. Call for the Luna Double. Get your second room of flooring free at 877 241 Luna. So the Pirates make some serious noise in the bottom of the first. Ryan Zimmerman back, 53 at bats in 15 games. Betting mark of 226, which he needs to be higher, but at the time he was hurt, he was one of the team leaders in runs batted in, and he's still one of the few guys on the ball club who's driven in double figures this year. I don't care how long you've been playing in the league when you go on the DL and come back there's always butterflies that first at bat that first game back. You feel like you've missed a month or so and it's just been a couple of weeks but. Just that one rehab assignment in Potomac he went over three there was a rain out the night before. He kept pushing the game time back Ryan said you know what I'm good I'll, I'll see you guys tomorrow and. <laughs> one thing we've learned about Ryan Zimmerman over the years he doesn't need a lot of at bats in spring training to get ready and. Not a lot of at bats off the DL as well. I was about to say if he just pretends this is March 1st, he'll get a couple of hits tonight. He's always hit well here, 0 for 6 career against Burnett. But it's a ballpark, guys will tell you they like, they see the ball well here. You've got to hit it pretty good to get it out to deep left center and really straight away left field for that matter. I don't think there's skylines like this in Vieira. Nope. And of course if you're a guy like Zimmerman who likes to hit the ball to right center it's a good ballpark for that. Burnett ahead a one pitch. Ryan thinking about right field. A.J. Burnett first inning 18 pitches 13 strikes. Zimmerman followed by LaRoche and Moore top of the second. Target way away. Does that mean breaking ball? Or is he going to try to paint? He does. Perfect fastball in the outside corner. Three out of four batters struck out. All three looking. All three looking at perfect pitches in perfect spots. I always talk about reading swings. We get a little caught up in the radar gun sometimes. 92, 93, occasional 94 from Burnett, but it's playing faster than that so far. Maybe he's a guy that winds up slow and kind of just jumps on you with the fastball. But so far, the national hitters have been late on the Burnett fastball. Pitch track brought to you by Mercedes Benz. Check them out on the web at MBUSA.com. Adam LaRoche will take a fastball right in there. Adam, a pirate, 07, 08, 09. He had 21, 25, and 12 homers in half the season here. Before being shipped off to Boston for a couple of games and then on to Atlanta. 
It's a breaking ball that drops near his front foot. One ball, one strike. Adam, as we showed you when we noted the Nats lineup, has always said well against A.J. Burnett. A home run and six for 18. Goes the other way and beats the shift. Adam LaRoche showing signs of life with that bat. That's his third hit on this trip, and he's had a couple of walks. And for whatever reason, when LaRoche, every time he arrives in the Steel City, he changes his first name to Boo because when he comes to the plate, it's Boo LaRoche. And <laughs> this time up, does a nice job of going the other way. He's been working on that and well accomplished. Job done, yeah. and there goes the no hitter. Yeah, if I was him and I checked into the hotel here, I'd be, my name would be Sidney Crosby. <laughs> Here's Tyler Moore hitting a buck 79. By the way, uh, didn't you just forget something? No, I said it. Oh, okay. Pay attention. Let's go. Okay. My attention was diverted by your red shirt <laughs> and the electric tie that goes along with it. Uh, thanks for trying to pick me up, but I'm, okay. I'm on top of it tonight. All right. I was preparing for the next hitter to hit one off the scoreboard and get the Nats going here. It's a good ballpark for right-handed batters to stay on the ball. But with that in mind, it's an off-speed pitch inside by A.J. Burnett. And they call that a changeup. I feel like it's more of a BP fastball off his 92. He'll throw it 87, 88. Just takes a little off. Adam subtracts. Yeah, we've seen him top out at 94 early. That one just misses. And A.J. Burnett can't believe it. Thought he had strike two. Hasn't really established anything off speed in the zone. Just doing a nice job of moving the fastball around. If I'm a Nationals hitter, I'm just sitting dead red. Forget about the off speed right now until he shows me he can throw a first strike. Yeah, uh, Clint Hurdle and Ray Searich took issue with that call. So Adam now 7 of 19 career against Burnett. There's Clint Hurdle. He's got things on the upswing here in Pittsburgh. There's no doubt about it. The Pirates were playoff contenders until late last year. They finished 79 and 83. Way behind the Reds, but not that far out of a wild card scenario. On a bouncer to the third baseman Alvarez. Moore retired. Adam LaRoche down to second base with two outs. Danny Espinosa coming in. When the Nats win, everybody does, especially if they win and score seven of more runs. 50% off regular menu online orders at PapaJohns.com. Yours by entering promo code NATS50. That's valid at participating D.C., Maryland, and Northern Virginia Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's, official pizza of the Washington Nationals. Great time for Danny Espinosa's first career hit against A.J. Burnett. He's 0 for 3. David Johnson talking before the game how he just needs to stay within himself. Not try to do too much. And more importantly, stay in the strike zone and not expand. As a hitter, when you're scuffling a little bit, sometimes you try to do too much and you go out of the zone. And Davey talking before the game, if Danny can just stay in the strike zone and do his thing, he'll be his guy. Yeah, they get ahead of him and then they take him up the ladder. So if there's a strike here, it could be hacking. Uh, he's going to take it, and that just misses. And A.J. Burnett, I think, thought he had a strike there as well. 6'4", 227. He's 36 years of age. Game in a three-player deal involving the Yankees in February of last year. They went out and won 16 games here. Inside, 2-1. Should get a pitch to hit right here, even with first base open and a couple of outs. You see all the fastballs, almost 80%, just moving it around. Espinosa, a late offer at that one. And the count's even 2 2. That thing right in on his hands. Right, that just tells me that Danny's not seeing the baseball like he can. He, you're just. 
scuffling, sometimes you swing with the count, meaning it's 2 1. I'm betting strike right here, and either he didn't pick that up or just decided he was swinging before the pitch and realized it was a ball as his hand started. And a breaking ball, side door, Burnett makes the play, and Danny Espinosa and the Nats are gone at the top of the second. Adam LaRoche got the first base hit near the Three Rivers. Beautiful Friday evening, Western PA. in nine games. He was back from some injury issues he had earlier in the year. 33 years of age now. He was with the Tigers from 01 until last year. Spent some time in Oakland. And he's had to reinvent himself from a catcher to a third baseman and now playing some outfield. That ball high in the air right side. Danny Espinosa will drift with it and catch it right behind Adam LaRoche, and that's what the wind is doing. It's pushing everything toward the first base line. Single game tickets are on sale. The guys are coming home next week. Tigers are in Tuesday and Wednesday. Cubs on the weekend. Some of those single game seats available for just $10. Nationals.com slash tickets. Come and join us. Short five game homestand before the Nats embark on a week and a half West Coast swing. Here's Pedro Alvarez. Yeah, weird scheduling, huh? Two off days, yeah. Monday and Thursday next week. Yeah, and then banished to the other side of the country for a week and a half. Pedro Alvarez at 244 last year, but a buck 94 so far this year. And he'll sky one out to center. Denard Span under it with Tyler Moore nearby. And two quick outs in the air for Ross Detweiler this inning. Can you be banished to San Diego, Los Angeles, and San Francisco? No, only if you really prefer wearing the white uniforms. I guess if you're, the, you're into Alcatraz, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty rough piece of duty, but it's not an easy baseball swing, that's for sure. Those are the games we put you to sleep at night, those 10 o'clock starts. Not that we don't every night, but just yeah. especially on the West Coast. Well, some of those parks, they're such good pitchers' parks. Tough to generate offense when you're going to play the Dodgers, Padres, then the Giants. 
Here's Clint Barmas, who's five for his last 11, batting a buck 81, 249 career hitter in parts of 10 years with Colorado, Houston, and 144 games with the Pirates last year. Two zero pitch. Dead Wilder gets a strike. It seemed like Jack Wilson played shortstop here forever, and then see since he departed about three years ago, they've tried a couple of different guys, and they've settled on this 33-year-old veteran right now. I mean, you see the guys that Neil Huntington, the general manager for the Pirates, is surrounding himself with: baseball players, veteran guys. To help the young guys along. And we're talking to Neil today, the young guys are starting to get it. That takes a little load off the veteran guys, but you know, Clint Barmas, a character guy, Russell Martin, a character guy, A.G. Burnett, supposed to be the leader of this ball club, and very rarely do you see a pitcher that goes out there every five days to be the leader of the club. Well, they gave up a couple of young guys to get him. And a tapper, it'll be foul, third base side. Ross Detwater would love to get the number eight man here, have the pitcher lead off. That's what the pie chart said, right? 97%. First time around. Yep. That usually serves you well at this part of the lineup. Don't want to get too tricky down there, and he gets a second strikeout. So Ross will hit in the third after Kurt Suzuki and right before Denard Span Pirates lead one nothing. McCutcheon and the Pirates lead the Nats 1 0. Our sideline report brought to you by AFSIA, the Association for Global Security Professionals. Hello, Julie. Hey, guys. Well, two gentlemen who are very familiar with starter A.J. Bennett, that would be Adam LaRoche and Kurt Suzuki, who have both faced him many times. And I asked them what they look for when going up against him, and they both said right away it's all about his breaking ball. Adam had said that he always had a really great command of that fastball, but then he began to develop a really effective, sharp, hard curveball. He said he has a knack for affecting hitters' timing, and Suzuki added that he has a lot of good stuff, but he spots the ball well, and he happens to throw extremely hard. Adam also wanted us to know that once you get past all those tattoos, he's actually a really cool guy, he said, and a really good teammate. Well, he's been around for a long time. Made his debut at the Marlins in 99. They drafted him originally. Way back in 95. Eighth round guy and at the age of 36. Pretty, pretty good. So Kurt Suzuki, 6 for 21 career against him. Following up on Julie's point about being familiar. Adam LaRoche in his 19th at bat. Got a base hit earlier. And Denard Spann in his 22nd at bat. Against Burnett struck out to start the game. So three Nets have seen a lot of this man. 
Kurt hitting 230. And that chopper will go foul. One ball, one strike. Pirates, by the way, their staff, ERA 3.87, number nine in the National League. But here's something for you. The recent resurgence of Davey Johnson's pitching staff, fourth best ERA in the entire league now, with Zimmerman and Heron leading the way on this trip, and Detweiler before that, 3.57. They were way up over five and then four runs a game for a while. Little tapper, left side, Pedro Alvarez, and safe at first. Took Alvarez just an extra second to get it out of his glove, and a good running catcher beats it out. Well, a good running catcher that's hustling down the line. And you see the, the double pump right here, a little traveling on Alvarez. That allows Kurt Suzuki to sneak in there, and we'll see how they score it. I think they're going to call that an infield single. They should. Kurt Suzuki with a knock his first time up, and they might have caught a break. Yeah, and when I saw that first replay, I thought they got him. They do give him a hit. Ross Deadweather has seven career sacrifice punts. One of those this year. He'll lay off that pitch, which misses. Well, you know, I got that call, don't you? All the balls that he's blocked <laughs> for John Hirschbeck over the course of his career at first base. We yeah. talk about that all the time. Kurt Suzuki blocks baseballs as good as anybody with nobody on. Yeah. You develop a relationship with those guys, and sometimes you get a call here and there. Well, Hirschbeck's been umpiring for 30 years. Suzuki around for about a third of that, and he's probably saved him several bottles of ibuprofen. <laughs> one ball, one strike to Ross Deadweather. Yeah, they have a little conversation down there in between pitches. How's the family? How's everybody doing? Good to see you. Thanks for the call. Deadwater chops it. Foul. Strike two. Yeah, that'll happen. He, you know, you're playing the infield, and one day, the second base umpire, you're talking to him. You know, hey, how's the wife? How's the kids? How's everybody doing? Great. How's your family doing? And then two days later, he's behind the plate, and he's ringing you up on a called third. <laughs> what happened to the house of the wife and kids a couple yeah. days ago? Ah, strike three. Thanks for coming. Just showing his professionalism, not letting that affect his work. One ball, two strikes, and Deadwater fouls it, and he's done. Fourth strike out of the game already for A.J. Burnett, and this one on a bun. This date in history, brought to you by Volkswagen. Springtoberfest event going on. Visit VWDealer.com. And on this day in 06, wow, has it really been seven years? Mr. Ted Lerner and his group. A large part of that, the family, for $120 million purchasing the Nationals from Major League Baseball. Cool. And it was going to take a while, but I remember that day, and we all felt pretty good about it. By later that summer, Ted and Mark and the sisters and the in-laws all started showing up around the ballpark. We were glad to see them, and we had a feeling things were going to be done a whole lot differently, and now they certainly have been. So... Happy anniversary to the learners on the purchase of the Nats. Had a plan, was patient, stuck with it. Look where things are now. Denard Spann called out on strikes first time up. And of course, by that time, the farm system was nothing to really crow about. Major League Baseball really didn't put a whole lot into that. The Expos had traded off so many of their good players. And Span will pop this one up to the left side. Pedro Alvarez for the second out. And we'll leave it up to Ian Desmond with two outs. So to my point about A.J. Burnett's fastball right now, jumping on hitters, Denard Span, we showed you know, last night. Oh, he's swinging more aggressively. This is a 2-0 count right here. He's sitting dead red and just a little late on that Burnett fastball. And, you know, read and swing so far. Obviously, everybody having a tough time getting the barrel out yeah. on the sneaky fast fastball from Burnett. And you saw how early Denard got his foot down. He was pretty much in no stride mode to make contact there. Couldn't do anything with it. First pitch breaking ball to Ian Desmond. And, of course, the Pirates know that Desmond's an extra base hit machine. They didn't want him hitting a double or a triple in this ballpark on a first pitch fastball there.
This is a triple spark if you can hit one hard over the shortstop's head. It'll go over that way to deep short. There's a play at second. Did he stay on the bag? Yes, Jordy Mercer did. 6 4 on that play. The Nats have two hits and they've stranded two, trailing by a run. Right. Bottom of the third coming up. The Pirates on top. One nothing. First of three here in Pittsburgh. Fox has the game tomorrow. And FP will be sitting alongside longtime veteran Howard David for that one. That'll be Steven Strasburg and left-hander Jeff Locke, who's three and one. Gio and Wandy. Gonzalez and Rodriguez on Sunday. Day off Monday. Tigers for two. Day off Thursday. And then if we're not too far out of sync. The Cubs for game one on Friday. What's what up with all these days off? Yeah. Cheating on you tomorrow. Man. AJ Burnett. Yeah, Howard stopped by the booth earlier tonight. Nice gentleman. I watched his work for probably three decades. We'd never met play by play guys, never get to see each other. We had a nice visit, and uh, I'm sure you and him will have a good time tomorrow. I thought it was cool when he left the boost. He said, see you later. Yeah, I said, if you use that tomorrow, my attorney will be in touch. That's how play by play guys talk to each other. And I said, thanks for your time. This time till next time. <laughs> one out, bottom of the third as A.J. Burnett hit one to Danny Espinosa. Top of the order for Starling Marte. Detweiler, by the way, 30 pitches, 19 strikes in his first two innings. So just a couple of pitches to get that out. He struck out Marte first time. Set it up with an off-speed pitch and then blew him away with a 93-mile-an-hour fastball. Starts him with 93 for a strike. Ah, there's a breaking ball. Curveball at 78. Foul tipped. Marte just 24 years of age, 167 at bats in the big leagues prior to this year. He was a 303 hitter in six minor league seasons, and he averaged over 20 stolen bases a year. Another breaking ball. You know who's going to cruise to that one? Denard Span about 20 feet or so to his right. Two quick outs here. Next up, Jordy Mercer. Those Natitude Flex packs are still out there. I'm going to be telling you about that this week and hoping you show up at the ballpark next week. Pick four games, get a fifth game free. You can check it out, nationals.com slash flex. So flex that Natitude. Come and join us at the ballpark five times, and one of them's on us. First pitch fastball. Mercer fly to center. This guy was a pretty good position player in college. And he was also a Division I closer who had 17 saves at Oklahoma State. 
called up today. Neil Walker, as mentioned earlier on the DL. They also made a change in their bullpen, dropping Jared Hughes and bringing veteran Jose Contreras to their pen. Edweiler six in a row since the Gabby Sanchez double after the McCutcheon first inning two out home run. Ross mixing things up another breaking ball. And their pen's been good Jason Grilly's been their closer this year he was just named delivery man of the month for April. Ten saves in the month he's got a 0 0.82 ERA. It was 10 for 10. Yeah, then he got another one in May already. Fastball up. Ross Detwater mixing things up. He's on right now, and here comes Bryce. Bounce stop to second base. First time up. He's your leadoff guy coming right in. a bridge here in Pittsburgh of the great number 21. Unbelievable career 3000 hits a career batting average of 317 240 home runs over 1300 RBIs 15 all star games you name it he did it FP and this guy before the phrase was coined was indeed a five tool player. Yeah 12 gold gloves to add to that led the National League in batting average four times. And a 3000 hit would be his last. Mm. Taken away from us way too early on December 31st of 72, aiding earthquake victims in Nicaragua. His plane went down. It's never been found. He and the other occupants of that aircraft never found. A tragic end to an amazing life of an amazing man and player. Bryce Harper swinging early. One pitch, top of the fourth, and he's 0 for 2. So the five tool player in baseball lingo hitting for average and power speed great throwing and of course the great glove to go with it. I asked Chip Winfield our producer if he'd show the tool race from Atlanta last night to <laughs> kind of emphasize our point right there and I got denied. You know yeah that, that would bring this whole thing down <laughs> the tool race come on. A.J. Burnett comes up and paints fastballs on Ryan Zimmerman. Got him 0-2, put one right on the outside edge first time. Pretty good one there to start him off. And as you can see from that shot, directly in from center field, this is another one of those ballparks that has the straight-in shot. You can really tell how far off the plate Ryan Zimmerman sets up. Just over the right shoulder of the pitcher here. The only reason you can see home plate is because Burnett's on the first base end of that rubber. Ryan's got a long way to go for some outside pitches here. That's a nasty breaking ball. Ryan's been struck out twice, and that's five for A.J. Burnett. Well, first time up, he backdoored the two seam fastball. 
to Ryan Zimmerman for strike three. So Ryan's thought process right there is he's going with that same pitch and he pulled the string on the curveball and just goes to show you how A.J. Burnett, Russell Martin are in sync right now. Pretty good game plan working. Somewhere way upstairs in that top level, we're looking at this one for you. This broadcast position, along with ours in D.C., the highest in baseball. Although I do think in Nationals Park, we're a little closer to the field than we are here. Set back pretty far. Yeah, I feel like I'm in a movie set here looking at the bridges, the river, the skyline downtown. Almost looks fake. One ball and two strikes. Well, if you want to get a couple of floaties, we'll uh, we'll let you find out it's all real. Allegheny River rolling by and maybe a half mile down to the right. It meets the Monongahela to form the mighty Ohio. Hey, floaties, I'll do a triple Lindy off that bridge. <laughs> One ball, one strike. Target away. He missed his spot low and inside that time. Two and one. The shift is still on. Clint Hurdle playing the percentages against Adam LaRoche. Last time he beat the shift with a base hit to left. And just working on staying square, like I said, first time up and not getting too close to where he feels like he has to spin out of there and make up for that front shoulder closing. Yeah, that's what he's been working on. Adam LaRoche, two of his three hits on this road trip have gone line drive style right over the shortstop. He pulled that double off the wall in Atlanta last night. Tyler Moore hopes to bat here in the top of the fourth. Adam good at bat. That's the third time he's walked on the trip. So slowly but surely Adam LaRoche is coming alive with the eye and with the bat. Well when he's walking he's seeing the baseball big and he's been getting into some hitting counts and. Things are looking up for him. And we said it'd be a process, and you're starting to see that process come to fruition. Yeah, baseball is a subtle thing day to day. At bat to at bat. And we're seeing that. Here's Tyler Moore who bounced out to Alvarez, the third baseman, first time up. Front door breaking ball. Not sure it was supposed to be there. It hung up and in for ball one. Nice crowd here tonight, by the way. BNC Park seats 38,000. 362. A lot of folks in the upper deck. They're excited about their baseball team here. Four games over 500. One game back of St. Louis in the Central. Yeah, they're excited about their ball club playing well, and they also couldn't get tickets to the Penguins game tonight. I was going to say, this is a pretty good crowd, crowd for a night when there's a hockey game one mile from here. Penguins had three goals in the first half. Sidney Crosby had two of them. First period, pardon me. And a swing and a miss on a fastball up. Two and one. You face guys like Burnett throughout your career. They're guys that lull you to sleep with their slow motion and then come at you hard with the fastball. You see that right there. Tyler Moore laid on a 2 0 fastball and a 2 1 fastball. And you're saying, well, He's got a quick bat. Why is he hitting? And Kurt Schilling was like that. Just a slow delivery and the ball would just explode on you. And you think you're getting down on time, but the ball plays faster than 93. Playing about 96, 97. Sign and drive today only during Nissan's sign and drive event. Choose Nissan.com. Tyler Moore gets a good piece of that one. And that's a base hit in front of Andrew McCutcheon. So the Nats, a pair of two out runners here. And for Tyler Moore, his second base hit. A nice adjustment right there. Take a little out of your swing with the two strike approach. Maybe set a trap on a 2 0 fastball late, 2 1 fastball late. Make the adjustment, get yourself a knock. Nice piece of hitting by Tyler Moore. Moore's second base hit on this trip and his sixth of the year in 30 at bats. So here's Danny Espinosa. Bouncer back to the pitcher. First time up 0 for 4 career against Burnett. When Danny got called up a few years ago, this is one of the ballparks where he did some serious damage. I saw Burnett right there. He big time wanted that pitch. Both hands up in the air. Asking James Hoy where that was. Now James Hoy having a conversation with Clint Hurdle. They wanted that pitch. Danny 
Get his first major league homer in this park against Zach Duke. And it was batting right handed. He hit it in the seats in right field a couple of years ago. 1 0 pitch. Right field. Base hit. Here comes LaRoche around third. Brandon Inge launches it up the line. And out at third base is Tyler Moore. Not a bad play by Tyler Moore right there. When you're thinking about how hard that ball was hit, there's going to be a play at the plate. Obviously, the throw up the line for Mins, but he was trying to draw a throw right there to tie the ball game up. Big knock right there for Danny Espinoza. Twenty Pirates. We're going to show you why Tyler Moore getting thrown out at third was a good thing right there. Danny Espinosa hits a bullet to right field, and because of the speed of Adam LaRoche, he's trying to draw the throw to third base. He's going all the way thinking that maybe they'll take a chance at me. If there's a good throw at home, LaRoche is out by a mile. Hinge got underneath that, launched the throw up the line, and Russell Martin did a nice job of meeting the ball out in front and getting more at third base. But good throw right there has LaRoche. And Tyler Moore, even though he was out trying to draw the throw, that's not bad baseball. Well, let's see what Ross Deadwater has in mind for Andrew McCutcheon. It's a first pitch fastball at 91. And I know how Ross likes to pitch, but that may be the last fastball he sees in this at bat. This will be interesting. He goes curveball low, one ball, one strike. Ball over the heart of the plate, and Andrew McCutcheon pretty soon is going to be hitting 500 career against the Nationals. I seriously can't remember this last time I've seen him make it out against the Nats. Just absolutely locked in fastball right back up the box, and a guy that you have to pitch to regardless of who's hitting behind him for the fact that he has 104 career stolen bases. He's only been caught 38 times, so he's not your typical number three hitter. That you know, a guy that slugs, you can pitch around him, and if he gets on first, he clogs up the bases. You walk him unintentionally, intentionally, pitch around him to get to Sanchez because you want to avoid him. He's going to hurt you on the bases. Gabby Sanchez, base hit, a double off the wall in right center first time. That was with two outs in the first. And your point on McCutcheon, six out of seven stealing this year. That's Luis Silverio, the first base coach, visiting with him. Such a good player. Yeah, how's this guy hitting 238? At least he was coming in. Here comes Span, and he grabs it. An absolute laser beam off the bat of Gabby Sanchez. Spanning. 
I'll tell you, when that ball left the bat, you didn't think it had any chance to be caught. Well, that's the hardest play. I talk about it all the time for a center fielder. That line drive low and hard right between your eyes. You see it move a little bit toward the left center field gap. Might have been knuckling. First step quickness, anticipating the baseball. Ross Detweiler saying nice play. And I got you, Danny Espinosa, on a double play. Martin hit the ball, 6-3 first time up. Russell takes a strike. Boy, I just made that play look so easy and playing a lot of center field throughout the course of my career. That, to me, was always the hardest play. If you freeze for a second to judge whether you're going in or back, it drops. If you go back, it drops. And some of those you come in on to go over your head. Not with an hard span. If it's in the park, he catches it spanning or hashtag spanning, however you want to do it. The good ones make the hard plays look routine. The bad ones make the routine plays look hard. Fastball just missing. One ball, one strike. Soft speed keeping the ball low. Martin has bounced in to three double plays this year. The Nats and the Pirates lead the league in the department of turning double plays. 31 for each defense. McCutcheon, no signs of running. That's low, three and one. They could turn him loose here. Nick Leva, third base coach for Clint Hurdle. Walked him. Two on, one out. Deadwater, first walk of the game. Let's go inside the numbers with STG Inc. So the Nats pitching on the road. Started off really rough in Cincinnati, got a little better in Miami and New York, and has been really, really good lately, especially in Atlanta the last two nights. That top one doesn't count. It's a great American small park. Brandon Inge, the hitter. Talking to the Pirates, they just got back from Milwaukee, experienced the same thing. The Brewers have historically owned the Pirates in that ballpark, and with some of the coaches on the Pirates staff today and they were saying every time a fly ball went up they just get the, the yips because they yeah. thought it was going on the ballpark. They said well same thing when the Nationals were in Cincinnati. Brandon Inch popped up to Espinosa first time. This is a little guy who at times in his career generated lots of power. 5'11". He's under 190 pounds. He hit as a rule in Detroit 13 16 one year in 06 27 home runs had a pretty good four or five year run with the Tigers a lunch bell guy comes to work every single day guy that keeps all of his teammates loose in the clubhouse has a good time playing baseball but when he gets between the line plays a game the right way hit 11 home runs in Oakland last year in 74 games helping them Make that crazy second half run they did after the Tigers let him go. One ball, two strikes. Off speed pitch stays way outside. Change up. We haven't seen too many of those from Ross Deadweather this year. And pretty much fastball curve. 84% heat, 16% off speed, mostly curve balls. And I think that was the first change. Two two. One out. Ground ball needed. He goes upstairs for the strikeout. That'll be Deadweiler's fourth of the night. And he went upstairs and so did Brandon Inge right here. Just chasing his fastball 94 miles an hour. Maybe a little sink to it, but up that high. Just a challenge piece that Inge can't catch up with. 
That'll bring in Pedro Alvarez with two outs, and he flied to Denard Span first time up. This would be a big shutdown inning for Ross to get the zero right after the Nationals tied things up. McCutcheon started, then stopped in a swing and a miss. He's going to steal third with two outs. He better be safe. Going to the gas pedal right now to try to close out this fourth inning. And you're seeing very similar fastballs between both pitchers tonight. Late life. A lot of hop at the end, very deceptive 93s on both sides. See you. Wow. He strikes out in John Highgas, goes one, two, three with fastballs on Alvarez. Pirates have stranded three, and it's a 1 1 game into the fifth inning. Daily departures between DC and New York. Book now at Amtrak.com. Yeah, he's done it again. McCutcheon, a home run, first inning. Adam LaRoche, though, got on base, and he's walked and scored the Nats' only run after a single in the second. Ross Detweiler, 59 pitches, 37 strikes now, through four pretty solid innings with 5Ks. I'm a little two out rally for you. Walk to LaRoche, a nice piece of hitting by Tyler Moore with two strikes, dumps it in front of Andrew McCutcheon, and Danny Espinosa. The big two out knock to right to get the Nats on the board and tie this game at one. Yeah, Brandon Inch threw that ball so poorly. It gave Russell Martin about 10 feet up the line toward third. And of course, Inch gets an assist for that with the catcher. And here's Kurt Suzuki who dropped a little ground ball down the third baseline for a base hit his first time. Deadweiler and Span to follow here in the fifth. That's about hit the Pirates 4-3 in a 1-1 game. Some of the only times hitting eighth when you feel like a normal hitter leading off an inning. You don't have to worry about all oh, the pitchers hitting behind me because you know they're going to come right after you. By the way, at Atlanta, bottom of the third, Mets three, Braves nothing. At Philly, home team on top of the Marlins, 4-1. Rest of the division playing each other tonight. That's are only two and a half games behind the Braves. And they're two up on the Phillies. What a difference two days makes, huh? After all the gloom and doom, and hey, admittedly, we were feeling some of it too. The Nats have two fewer wins than the Braves. It's like you win two days in a row, and it's a total change in atmosphere. It's amazing. I have a theory on all that, and I'll get to it after this pitch. You should, you should win two in a row whenever you can. Oh. So a little back up Brandon Inge to the warning track. That breeze blowing straight in from center field now. That ball kind of 
kept drifting away from the right fielder. Well, it's pretty simple. Last year, the Nats got out of the gate quick, and I don't think they were playing their best ball in September. They kind of wobbled down the stretch to the NL East Championship and kind of took that same sort of game into the playoffs against the Cardinals. And you know, they played well early, and they didn't play so good, I feel like, in September. Not their best baseball, and you want to do it the opposite. You want, you want to be playing your best ball in September in meaningful games. And Maybe that's the way the season lines up, but it's one day at a time. Enjoy the journey. Don't worry about September now or October. It's in there to Ross Deadweiler, who struck out trying to bunt Suzuki to second base back in the third after Kurt let off of that base hit. Nice rip. Strike two. Deadweiler. Five hits in 100 career at bats. And a breaking ball locks him up. That's number six for Burnett. Slots, tables, and dining, the ultimate triple play. Hollywood Casino, Charlestown races with our singles leaders. In the National League. Michael Young of the Phillies not driving the ball like he did in Texas, but he sure helped their offense. And then Starling Marte, the leadoff man for the Pirates. I saw something yesterday where Denard Spann was leading baseball with base hits up the middle with 14. Well, that's using the field, staying on the ball. Isn't that like the indication of the best time to swing when it goes right back from where it came? Use the middle of the field. No balls and two strikes. Span has struck out looking and then fouled out on a two strike pitch to Pedro Alvarez over at third base. Burnett's been coming into Denard with two strikes. Let's see where they go. Me and Desmond lurking. Nine game hitting streak on the line for Ian tonight. He's 0 for 2. I'm sure it's the last thing he cares about. He just wants to help the ball club. It all started with two outs last inning. And Span will take that breaking ball and follow it over by the Nationals dugout. I mean, no, no offense to Rafael Soriano with the untuck, but I got Ian Desmond's as just a little bit better at shortstop when they win. It's a little more emphatic, and I feel like it's only a matter of time before when they do win a game with Soriano on the mound that. Every single guy in the field does it. <laughs> and I, for one, am all for that. I love it. Well, when you look at championship seasons, different teams have had there. There's always, always a little quirk or something that team comes up with during the season. And Soriano's been doing it for a while, but I just like the fact that Ian Desmond's following suit behind him. <laughs> Do not have a hit in eight at bats from the four guys at the top of the order tonight. And that's to the right side for Gabby Sanchez. One, two, three, go the Nats in the top of the fifth inning. Detweiler back to work against eight, nine, and one.
bottom of the fifth inning. 59 pitches, 37 strikes for Ross Deadweather. We have an AT&T fact of the game for you. Jay Bell, that famous hit in Arizona that Luis Gonzalez dropped in off Mariano Rivera. Jay scored the winning run. When he was here in Pittsburgh in the early 90s, he might have been the best bunter in the National League. Seemed like they get their leadoff guy on every night, and before you knew it, with Jay Bell batting second, that guy'd be on second base. Well, he had such a good staff. He was playing for that early run. They played such good defense. Get that run early and hang on. This one flared out to center. It's hanging up plenty of time for Denard Span with Ian Desmond in the neighborhood. See what Chris Johnson from the Braves is doing? He's appealing that call last night to Major League Baseball on the ruling of Denard Span's ground ball. He's appealing. He's appealing that call. I've never heard that before in my life. He said, it's ridiculous. The guy hit a ball off the end of the bat, and that's an easy play. If he doesn't think I can make that play, he's crazy talking about the official score. So he's appealing wow. Denard Spann's two RBI double last night that we thought was a hit, and we wondered why Chris Johnson was playing so shallow at third base with runners on second and third and two outs. That's a situation where most big league hitters want to drive in both runs. They just don't want to butt in one. Strange. That ball hit hard, and here comes Spann. He's got it. And then he'll do a tumbling shoulder roll to finish it off. Two down. How good is that guy? Are you kidding me, folks? This might be the best one of the year. He's gone a long way and robbed some home runs, but watch the range right here. And it's just being ready for the baseball. I mean, in his mind, every single ball, the whole game is coming to him. He's never surprised. You never see a jab step, a false step. Ross Detwater approves. And he is saying that is some kind of center fielder behind me. Can all the Pirates please hit the ball to him? Well, I have six of them who have. And only one dropped in. That was McCutcheon. Top of the order now. Starling Marte, who has struck out swinging and lined out to span. Deadweiler now four in a row since that walk to Russell Martin last inning. Only way to get one to Denard Span that's not an out is to put it on the ground. And Marte is one for three tonight. Bearing in Jordy Mercer. They've got a runner picked off, and Adam LaRoche can't get a handle on it for the throw. I'll tell you what, Marte was safe either way. You talk about some lightning fast speed, a great jump, even though Roche came up to meet this ball. Watch. I mean, he is in there at second base either way. And I think LaRoche tried to rush it because he was thinking like we're thinking up here. He tries to come to meet the baseball. And you see right there, even if he throws it, he's safe. First move pays off for the Pirates here with two outs in the fifth. That's their 17 steal of the year. They're in the top five in the league in home runs and stolen bases. Mercer, fly ball to center, and a swinging strikeout. You want the inning to end here for a lot of reasons. And the biggest one standing in the on deck circle. Ball two. Second career home run. Just called up today, and the Pirates lead 3-1. Well, that's when maybe the guy on deck has an influence on what you're thinking about the guy in the box. Ross Debweiler knows that there's a little bit of ownage on deck, and Bryce Harper tests his ribcage right here, slamming into the wall once again. That 
That couldn't have felt good for Bryce Harper. Had to feel good for Jordy Mercer. That's a good swing. Big knock for the Pirates. All their runs driven in by home runs tonight, and now McCutcheon takes one in there. So the Pirates have hit 31 home runs this year, and they've retaken the lead here, fifth inning. McCutcheon home runs, single up the middle. I'll tell you what, just the presence of great hitters, I've seen it change the way pitchers throw the guy in the box based on who's hitting behind him, just because you know there's a lot of pressure on you to get this out right now because of who's on deck, and I think Ross fell behind, laid one in there and paid the price because of the early success and the reputation of Andrew McCutcheon as being one of the best players in the league. 59 pitches going into this inning. And McCutcheon left side, he's three for three. I've never seen anything like this guy against the Nats pitching staff. You're talking about good pitchers over the past few years. I know every team has their guy. Unreal. Well, very rarely, I think the Nationals were done with the Pirates early in the season last year, maybe April, early May. And that's the last time they faced him. But very rarely do you play a guy in all the way in September, still tell everybody you think he's the best player in the league. And I said that all year about Andrew McCutcheon last year based on what the five or six games the Nationals played against him last year. Craig Stammen is jumping up to start throwing urgently. Hit it a ton too to get it out of here in left field. We've seen some bombs hit today. Yeah, straightaway left field's like almost 380. This is 383 right there. And I usually see the home runs in PNC to right, right center. The wind's blowing in too from left. So a couple of balls touched here tonight by the Pirates. Gabby Sanchez double off the right center field wall. And he hit that one iron straight out to. Denard Spann last time up, so he has made two serious pieces of contact against Ross Deadwell. Pirates have now out hit the Nats 6 4. Good fastball inside corner counts, even. I think that's where you got to pitch Gabby Sanchez. He likes to go the other way, he's got a lot of pop to the Opposite side of the field. The guy that likes to get extended could do some damage up the middle the other way. Had a hard time getting a read on Ross Deadweiler today. Well, that play with Marte stealing second base with two outs. Huge right now. And a 2 1 pitch. Hooking foul. Maybe Sanchez having comfortable hacks against Ross Deadweiler. All the runs in this baseball game tonight have been scored with two outs by catching two outs in the first. Nobody on home run. Mercer, two outs, runner on second here, home run, and that scored their run in the fourth with two outs. Gutchin on the move now. Adam LaRoche behind him. He'll back up some more when the pitch is delivered. And that is foul outside third. 
Boy, they have a, a thing down the left field line here. This doesn't tell you the pitch speed. It says pitch speed 90 miles an hour, horizontal break 12 inches, vertical break negative 5. And I have no idea what that means. This one popped up out in the center where Denard Span has a read on it. Horizontal break, 12 inches, vertical break, negative four right there on that fly ball to end the inning. And it fell 50 feet into Denard's glove. was a relay tonight and Abe and George were doing quite well then they handed off to Bill and Tom and look at William Howard Taft until the parrot offers him an extra large pizza well the pierogies are lucky that he didn't eat one of them <laughs> and uh, I can remember this over the years the presidents are still winless in Pittsburgh how do you beat a pierogi in Pittsburgh you think the president's ran here from D.C.? I don't know. Based on the end of that race, they might have. Top of the sixth, Ian Desmond, Bryce Harper, and then Ryan Zimmerman. The only hits in the lineup tonight from the five spot on down. And that's lined up the middle, and Jordy Mercer was playing Ian Desmond as far up the middle as we've seen anybody play this year. Yeah, that's one time where the exa exaggerated shift paid off. Standing right behind his pitcher. So the first four batters for the Nationals 0 for 10 tonight. LaRoche has a base hit, a walk and a run scored. Tyler Moore set up that run that Danny Espinosa drove in in the fourth inning. And Kurt Suzuki has an infield hit. That'll bring in Bryce Harper. It was 0 for 2, couple of ground balls pulled to the right side. Bryce looking to snap an 0 for 14. Yeah, how about that? Well, it can't be too comfortable to swing right now. And a 1 1 hit hard up the middle. Corralled by Barmas, and Harper beats it out. A pretty good effort by Barmas right there. I thought that ball was ticketed for center field. He was playing Bryce Harper up the middle, shading him a lot like Mercer was to Ian Desmond, only the other way around. Bryce Harper with a, a nice swing on the curveball from Burnett. Barmas still made this close after bobbling it. Gabby Sanchez trying to sell the call. And let's see how Bryce runs down to first. Smelling the hit. Gets a hit. 
breaks the offer. Yep. And one on one out now. Ryan Zimmerman. Burnett's been using the outside part of the plate. That's what they're going to they're going to set up here and he misses outside. I think the book on Ryan Zimmerman this year so far is everything's been away. I haven't really seen anything on the inner half to pull. I've been staying outside with fastballs and sliders that start on the outer half and tease the plate away. I'm going out there again. So as a hitter, do you ever change where your batting stance takes place or you just start a little earlier to get out there. You just look for the ball out there. If you change where you're standing in the box, everybody notices there's so many cameras and so many eyes on you in the box. You do that, they'll try to bust you back in. You just look for it out there and you let the ball travel and try to keep your front side closed as long as you can. Harper back in. And maybe just disregard the inner half of the plate, but it's so hard. And I, obviously, I wouldn't know for a power hitter to disregard the inner half because they're thinking about. Put one in the seats of the pole side a lot. And they feel like as soon as you do that, you're going to see something middle in. You see that? It's a mistake that Ryan Zimmerman in a couple of games will not miss. Burnett wanted that away. It was right down the middle, 2 1. Bryce Harper picked off for the second out when the Nats are down by two. And I don't think he was going anywhere right there. I think Burnett just caught him getting into his initial lead. There was no real lean by Harper. Just a good throw right on the money. Let's see if they got him. Sanchez with a quick tag. Bang, bang at first. Yeah, it was pretty close. And a 2-2 to Ryan Zimmerman. Hits it hard the other way out of play. There's no place to go down by two in the sixth inning if your four hole hitter up. So I don't think Bryce Harper was going right there. And that just with a quick snap throw to first got him. And the inning unravels in a hurry. Zimmerman 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. And the Nats down by two now after five and a half. Thinning 79 pitches 50 for strikes and down by a couple of runs trying to keep things close here Miller Life party nights back at the ballpark 
Next week it'll be Friday and Saturday for home games. Get a scoreboard pavilion seat and a drink starting at $21. Available online only. Visit nationals.com slash party to check it out. Yeah, Russell Martin got off to a slow start this year in April for the Pirates, and he made an adjustment with his back foot. And he's kind of pointing it back toward Kurt Suzuki. You see the angle his back toe is at right there? That's keeping his front side actually closed a little bit longer. If that foot is not like that, he has a tendency to kind of spin out of there quick. His front hips open up too fast, and the reason he's had all the power the other way is because he saw Miguel Cabrera from the Tigers in spring training do that with his back foot. And it keeps his front side closed. It keeps his bat in the strike zone a little bit longer and allows him to let the ball travel. And hit with tremendous power the other way. He hit some home runs to right field this year like a left-handed pole hitter. Funny, when you're catching back there, you notice other hitters a lot. And he saw Miguel Cabrera in spring training this year. He kind of copied what he's doing with his backside. Yeah, he was ripping on 3-0 and there, fouled it off to the left side. Martin has grounded out and walked. Somewhere where we can't see, there are fireworks going on. There is. <laughs> because skies have been absolutely clear. They are running a big marathon in downtown Pittsburgh on Sunday morning. It looks like over by the Golden Triangle, a serious display is going on. So... About the last thing a pitcher needs to hear at this stage of a game, and Ross Detwater will walk his second guy as Thunder Boomers are close. It'll be Brandon Inch coming up now, and the Pirates box score will show you the home runs making a big difference tonight. McCutcheon solo, two outs in the first, and then it all started with two outs in the fifth when Marte singled, stole second after Detwater picked him off, and then Mercer Homer. Now Ross, after walking, Martin here in the sixth is done for the night after five innings plus one hitter. This call to the bullpen packaged by the UPS store. We love logistics. Craig Stammen. Six hits, two walks, five strikeouts, a couple of home runs. Could be responsible for up to four runs tonight. PNC Bank, we're in their hometown for the achiever in you. So let's check in on J.C. Romero, who came close to making the club out of spring training. Look at the ERA in 10 games and a 7-to-1 strikeout-to-walk ratio, and the league only hitting 214. Veteran guy. Good situational lefty. Here's Craig Stammen against Brandon Inge. Right in there. They're going to actually bat Travis Snyder for Inge now. And swap outfielders getting the left-handed swinger in there. Two and one, two eight four. 
15 strikeouts versus just four walks. Opponents hitting 233 fastball, curveball, slider. Snyder, 25 year old left hand hitting outfield from Mill Creek, Washington. Good play by Stammen on the reaction. And luckily for him, the ball right toward first base. Able to finish things off to LaRoche for the first out. They get into a big league game. Throw a fastball down the middle, and that one looked like it was going to hop, stayed down. It was a nice job to keep it in front. But from where he hit that ball, it looked like it might come up. It didn't. It hugged the ground, and that ball was ticketed for center field. Good play by Stammen. That's it. We'll bring in Pedro Alvarez, who has flight out to center and struck out swinging. Greg Stammen missing with that breaking ball low. Alvarez 0 for 1 career against him. Seven for 29 coming in tonight off lefties, but just 11 for 64, a 172 average early in the season for Alvarez versus righties. And he's a guy that, through the course of his career as a Pittsburgh Pirate, is either red hot or ice cold. There's no in between. Got off to a slow start in April, heated up a little bit. It's a guy that Clinton Hurdle really relies on for his pop and consistency. It just hasn't really been there over the course of his career yet. Craig keeping that fastball down, just missing. 3 0. Alvarez out of New York City. High school player of the year at Horace Mann went on to Vanderbilt where he was an All-American. Pirates made him the second overall player taken back in 08. Three balls one strike. Good fastball. Tailing action at 91. Mercedes Benz will track it. Just great command of the fastball. You fall behind a 3 1 count. You have first base open and a right hander on deck. You don't have to give in right there if you're Craig Stammett, but a perfectly placed two seam fastball. Probably go there again after that swing. <laughs> on the charge, Zimmerman. Gloves, throws, got him. Smooth as ever on that play. Two outs. You knew you had to see that at least once tonight, didn't you? Yeah. I haven't seen this in a while. A slow roller from Ryan Zimmerman on the run. Underhand throw right on the money. Give Craig Stammer a lot of credit right there for executing the game plan with first base open and righty on deck. He put the ball right where he wanted it. Three times in a row to Pedro Alvarez. Nice job. Couple of ground ball outs here. That'll bring in the number eight man, Clint Barmus. A.J. Burnett is on deck. Barmus hitting 176, but a pitcher on deck. So make quality pitches here. Took a little bit off. That's a good breaking ball. 84. Well, you know the drill. Excuse me, slider first strike, then bounce the slider next. The runner on third. He has confidence in Kurt Suzuki to block the pitch, but that's been the MO for Craig Stammen the last couple of years. Throw a slider first strike, then bounce it and get a swing through, chase strike three. All right, maybe the heater inside sets that up.
another fastball. Left side Zimmerman. Right on target. Inning over. So the leadoff walk doesn't hurt. Another good job by Craig Stammen. What else is new? Seventh inning coming up. Brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Pittsburgh is the home of PNC and a beautiful night here. As you look at the Golden Triangle, Allegheny River to the left, Monongahela to the right, forming the Ohio and right on the banks of the Allegheny PNC Park. Seventh inning coming up. Nats need some offense. And Tuesday night, when the boys return home, it's a 7.05 against the Tigers. First 25,000 fans through the center field gates only receive the backpack presented by MLB Network. Go to nationals.com slash tickets. That's while supplies last. Some restrictions apply. Travis Snyder stays in to play right field. In fact, he'll have three infielders right in front of him because Adam LaRoche is coming up to lead off the top of the seventh. Adam has singled to left center. He has walked and scored. And Clint Barmas stays at shortstop and Pedro Alvarez moves all the way over on the other side. Plays a little second base. And Barmas comes up and plays almost between the baseline of second and third just in case there's a slow roller over there. So if you hit one to this guy right there, oops, it's 5 3 in your scorebook. Adam takes it 2 0. He's had good career success against Burnett, 7 of 19. But once again, finds himself in an offensive count. Yep. You know, I talked to Steve Blass before the game, great Pirates pitcher, longtime broadcaster, and he saw Adam as much as we have. And he said timing is just everything with him. When he's got it right, he is unstoppable. And we feel like the way he's seeing the ball, he's just getting closer and closer to having that timing locked in. It is 200th home run in New York a couple of weeks ago. That's on the outside corner, and the count's even 2-2. Two, two. At 2-1, you're looking for something with a little more plate than this if you're Adam LaRoche, but that's a pitcher's strike, a perfectly placed fastball right there. Once again, from A.J. Burnett, his control has been very good with the fastball tonight. Breaking ball for the strikeout. Yeah, fastball command good, and then he's got this with two strikes. Usually throwing it to right handers. This time a LaRoche bottom drops out. Not a lot of side to side on that. Got on top of that one straight down almost 12 6. Tyler Moore base hit up the middle last time up. The hardest hit ball of the night by a national. A one hopper right to McCutcheon out there that 
Matt LaRoche to second base and from there Espinosa drove him in with a base hit. Fastball. That one's well hit out to right. Snyder playing well off the line and he grabs it. That'll bring in Danny Espinosa with two outs. MLB.tv celebrating 11 years. Millions of fans use it every day. Every out of market game live online on your favorite mobile and connected device in HD quality. MLB.tv premium. MLB.TV baseball everywhere. You see Bernetti, he, he varies his arm angles on that curveball he throws when he drops down a little bit, kind of a three quarter release, he'll get that side to side action on it. When he gets on top of it, like the one of LaRoche, it goes straight down. It's all the same pitch, he just toys with the release point and the arm angle to get different kinds of break. On the curve. Two balls and no strikes. Burnett has walked one tonight and it cost him Adam LaRoche with two outs back in the fourth. He has struck out eight. And Kurt Suzuki a couple of good at bats tonight. Hit that ball hard to right field last time up. And his 94th pitch of the night is in there three and one to Danny. Pitcher's batting spot not that far away. Matthews throwing. Get in on three and two. Ooh, oh my. Danny thought it was low. We thought it was low. James Hoy said no. And Danny Espinosa can't believe he's been called out. Seventh inning stretch time in Pittsburgh. They got to love that. of Arlington and Mercedes Benz of Alexandria. Andrew McCutcheon three for three. What else is new? A home run. Danny Espinosa RBI for the Nats. They're only one of the night. And A.J. Burnett now 96 pitches through seven. Andrew McCutcheon what new? 
First time up, two outs. Bottom of the first, a long home run to left field. And how about Jordy Mercer? Just clearing the wall and left to put the Pirates up three to one. Yeah, just cleared the wall, just called up today. A.J. Burnett batting here, bottom of the seventh. Greg Stammen, three in a row to put an end to that. Sixth inning after Ross Detwater walked the leadoff man and left the game. Craig really mixing things up well here. No balls and two strikes. I watched A.J. Burnett's last outing against the Cardinals today on tape, and he didn't have the same pinpoint command with his fastball that he's had here tonight. I mean, it wasn't a bad outing by any means, and he gave up five hits over six innings, just two runs to the Cardinals, but his fastball command was not like it is tonight here. Yeah, we saw that pretty early, didn't we? Struck out Span looking, Desmond looking to start the game, Zimmerman looking to start the second inning, and he just kind of took that early momentum and he's carried it through. I mean, you might be saying, well, what about the curveball? It's been good too, but to me, everything for a hitter is off of the fastball. If you can throw that first strike and it's got a little hair on it like his has tonight, everything works off that. You got to cheat to get to the heater. It leaves you open to the off speed. Four straight for Craig Stammen. Starling Marte coming up. So tonight, six strikeouts by Nationals pitchers. That's $37 times six to the Children's Inn at the National Institutes of Health. And that's thanks to the generosity of our D.C. area Toyota dealers. Case for kids. Thank you Toyota. Marte big sequence in the game last time up two out single. Kept the inning alive so that. The rookie Mercer could hit a home run. So Craig Stammen due to bat second in the eighth trying to get two more outs and get the Nats into that eighth inning down by two. That's a good point you make just keep this game right where it's at. And as good as Burnett has been tonight, he's at 96 pitches, so it'll be interesting to see how long Clint Hurdle goes with him. And just hang around, hang around, you never know. Pretty good fastball to jam in there. Actually took a little bit off. 85. Well, and there's another reason to get the next two guys. <laughs> Not only because of who he is, and that's McCutcheon, who's somewhere behind Clint Hurdle. But McCutcheon is three for four career against Stammen with two home runs. Two balls and two strikes to Marte. Well, the backhand of Hurdle's bullpen has been so good. He's always got that in his back pocket. melanson has been good in the in the eighth and really, as we mentioned, reliever of the month in April of the ninth. Ten for ten, perfect in saves. Yeah, their setup guy, Melanson, a former closer with Houston, Boston for a while. Joel Hanrahan is in Boston now, the former Nat and Pirates closer. Great pitch. Ball three. It did look like it was off the plate, totally handcuffing Marte right under his hands. Nissan will track it. When you strike out on a close pitch and you're standing out on defense, <coughs> you're wondering maybe where that pitch was. I'm sure Danny Espinosa had a long look in there asking. That was better than the one I just struck out on. And then he takes a breaking ball into left field. Barring a double play, McCutcheon will bat in this inning. And stepping in is Jordy Mercer. Well, Starley Monterey, some kind of player for these Pirates. Got off to a great start in April, and he's keeping it going here in May. Thirty-five hits in April. Most in a month. Tied with Matty Alou and Nate McLeod from 2008. Hmm. Matty Alou in 1969. <laughs> Matty Alou was the singles hitter out of the three Alou brothers. He probably used a bat that was as big as he was. Yep. Lefty slap on the left. Felipe probably had the most power of the three, and Jesus was somewhere in the middle.
I was talking about Felipe Alou today with the first coach I ever had in a ball, David Jouse. He's a coach with the Pirates this year. He was my first coach, and Felipe was the manager in West Palm Beach, Florida, in 1989, just a couple minutes ago. Standing up with a steal, his second of the night, Marte. He is nine out of 11 this year. I mean, he had such a good jump, nobody was covering at second base. I don't know if there was a mix up on the coverage or they just figured he had that bag rip, but there was no middle infielder there for Kurt Suzuki to throw to. Ties Juan Pierre for the league lead. Check out the jump from Marte right here. Suzuki looking to throw, and I don't know if there was nobody there. He just felt like the bag was stolen, so he just ate it. There was nobody there. There was yeah. nobody covering on that steal. Somebody has to be there for Suzuki, regardless of the jump. Catcher's version of a check swing. Two balls, no strikes. Stammen bounces one. I mean, there's been physical errors early in the season for the Nationals, and that's one thing. That's part of the game, but I've seen more mental errors this year early on than I've seen all last year. It's been puzzling at times, no doubt about it. You can live with the physical ones. That's baseball. The mental ones, those are rough. Well, if you do retire, Mercer, Gives you the opportunity to walk McCutcheon and take your chances with Gabby Sanchez. Have a hard time believing if there were two outs and a runner at second, the Nats would pitch to Andrew. Now they have to. Was that not ball four? Nope, umpire's got a different signal. The scoreboard had 3 1. We had 3 1. Somewhere along the line, a strike that nobody knew about. Right down the middle. It's 3 and 2 now. And a steal of third uncontested for Martin. But I'll tell you what, he is 0 to 60 in about one step. You talk about fast <laughs> and top speed quick. Watch how fast. Nobody really paying attention to him. He steals third base easily. Infield has to be drawn in now. Stammen gets the strikeout on a breaking ball. And now this gives the Nats the chance to avoid McCutcheon. Inside the numbers, STG Inc. on Andrew. 16 game hitting streak against the Nats. And on base percentage plus slugging, a ridiculous 1.463. Any, anything over 1.000 is considered really good. Well, look at the company. And this should be interesting. I think he's just going to slide him and trust Kurt Suzuki. To block. It's like Hollywood Squares right there. I'll take Kurt Suzuki to block, please. <laughs> Breaking ball hit to Zimmerman. Ryan throws out McCutcheon. Could be a key point in the ball game. Do the Nats bats have the rest of that equation?
Cards three, Nats one into the eighth inning. So A.J. Burnett is out of the game. Nats are into the Pittsburgh bullpen here. More on that in a minute. Every home run that Nats hit this year. And uh, just one lately, but 28 on the year. It's $250 to the Children's National Medical Center. So Lexus is the pursuit of perfection. And that money to the National Medical Center for the kids, courtesy of our Washington, D.C. Lexus dealers. 28-year-old right-hander Mark Melanson, 41 games with Boston last year. Two years ago when the Nats saw him, 20 saves with Houston. He's unscored upon in his last seven games and his 060 ERA, second among National League relievers. So I have to do a make good, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Kurt Suzuki leads off. I just say I thought it was odd that nobody was covering on this play, but then I look who's umpiring at second base today, and it's Balk and Bob Davidson. He called a balk on Craig Stammen right there. Oh, really? And that's why it was a ball four, and that's why nobody was covering. Unbelievable. But just a little arm signal to second base that we all missed. <laughs> so that's why that whole thing happened the way it did. All right, Marte. And that is a doesn't big, have nine steals anymore. You can mark that EFP in your score books. No, I just put BBD. Walking Bob Davis. I should have known just looking at the scorebook. Little tapper. It gets by the mound. And third baseman Pedro Alvarez makes the play. That's a hit. Chad Tracy for Craig Stammen here. Tonight's copyrighted broadcast presented by authority of the Washington Nationals Baseball Club and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Chad Tracy, first career appearance against Melanson. But usually when a balk is called, you can hear it no matter where you're sitting in a ballpark. It's never just a little arm signal like that. It's, you know, everybody knows it's, they scream it as loud as they can. That one just a little point to second base that we did not pick up the first time. And that's pinch hitters five for 38 this year. Tracy one for eight. And that's five for 38 without a run batted in. Well hit. Off the glove of Alvarez. Extremely well hit, but catchable, and the Nats get a break. Oh, that ball was smoked. Alvarez put his glove up and didn't stick in there. And Chad Tracy with a nice swing the other way. Let's see what happens on this one. Good piece of hit, and he just reaches out and misses it. I mean, interesting to see how they score that, but either way, the tie and run is at the plate in the form of the darn span. Roger Bernardino will pinch run for Chasey. They have put an error on the board. An arch span 0 for 3. Great speed in the box and at first. Rogers got to stay home. Nets need him on base until they drive him in. They already lost one runner on a pickoff tonight. It's a good swing by Chad Tracy, regardless of how they scored it. It's nice to see him going hard the other way. A lot like Adam LaRoche, that's how you know he's starting to lock it in, too. A lot of Nationals hitters seeing this right-hander for the first time. Span another of them.
Fastball outside corner. Or is that a changeup? 91 is a cutter. He's got a fastball cutter curveball. And try to backdoor this cutter to Denard Span gets the call. Good frame by Russell Martin. Very subtle pulling it in. Yep, 91, the heater. And he throws that cutter almost half the time, or a little over half the time, excuse me. Doesn't throw the fastball that often. That's trying to get something going offensively any way they can. Ian Desmond hit the ball hard last time, lined out to Mercer. He's over for three tonight, trying to keep that nine game hitting streak alive. One on one out, top of the eighth. Bats have been quiet all week. The last two nights, the pitching was so impressive. Although the Nats did get three runs on eight hits last night, that's a feast lately. And here's a one two pitch. Span late and he strikes out two down. Get the latest Nats news the moment it happens delivered direct from Mass and to your mobile phone text Nationals to two nine two nine two. This is where if you're Davey Johnson you're hoping that Ian Desmond runs into one right here right now. Two career at bats against Melanson, 0 for 2. This is where, if you're Ian Desmond, you're hoping you run into one right here, right now. And if you're a broadcaster, you hope you can call a homer right here, right now. First pitch off speed. Well, that, that cut fastball that Melanson features is tougher for a left hander than a right hander, meaning it, it'll break off your barrel under your hands. And we all know about Mariano Rivera. We've seen Soriano this year with that cut fastball, but it suits up nicer. For a right handed hitter because it'll start at you and break right out over the plate and sometimes cut fastballs turn into hanging sliders. Well, Lanson's had a great year this year. He's got good stuff, but it's a better matchup than the lefty facing him. Desmond taking a home run swing. One ball, one strike. Yeah, and this one was right out over the plate. Desmond thinking along with us. Gave it a go. Another big rip. Not getting cheated. Think about home runs and the ones we've seen here tonight. It's been to the pull side and left center field, but the kind of power that Ian Desmond has, you can leave the other way here. The short porch and right. Yeah, easily reachable for guys who are strong. And a one two count here. A lot of hitting room right side as they hold Bernardina here with two down. Target way out there. Desmond strokes it to right. Bernardina can cruise to third. And Desmond will hold a little bobble by Snyder in right field. And the Nats have runners at the corners with two outs. Oh, a nice piece of hitting right there in a two strike count. Took his shots early in the count. And then takes a little bit out of his swing with two strikes. Puts the ball in play. And had he had known that Travis Snyder was going to bobble this, he and Desmond would have gotten a scoring position. But Snyder got to it quick. He stopped and Bernardina easily to third. And the stage is set for Bryce Harper. That's how you continue a hitting streak is by using the ballpark like that. Well, this is a hard park for closers facing right handed hitters. And what I mean by that is usually a good closer will say, hey, beat me to the big part of the park. I'm going to throw everything on the outer half and make you beat me as a right handed hitter the other way. But here, the big part of the park is pull side. So that's where the dilemma starts. Do you pound a, a power hitting right handed hitter in? Or do you make him beat you the other way with the short porch? And I think right now this conference is about, well, let's make Bryce Harper beat us to the big part of the park where it's 383 
in left center and 410 to the bullpen. I'd be shocked if he sees anything on the inner half right here. Bryce Harper based it up the middle last time. A ball off the glove of Clint Barmas, the shortstop, who was shading him up there. Let's well, go right man in the right spot. He's never faced Mark Melanson. McCutcheon just a few steps toward right center, but they play Bryce straight away. And man, Starling Marte on the offside really playing deep in left field. There's only so far you can play deep on the right side. So the tying runs are on base. They're going in. With 92. Well, I think if you're going to go in right here to Bryce Harper, you're going to make sure it's in there and maybe even off the plate. First pitch cutter. That round goes to Melanson. Inside again. He's going in there, but it's more for effect, and Bryce Harper's offering at it. But I didn't think there was any way they were going to go middle into Bryce Harper in this situation, representing the go ahead run. How do they follow it up? They're going in there again. Third base, Bernadina. First base, Desmond. Two of the fastest guys on the team. Eighth inning. Down by two. Harper gets jammed, and that's a foul ball. I mean, I understand the game plan, and so far it's working. Russell Martin setting up in off the plate to Harper, and he's just pounding that cutter, starting it as a strike and working it off the plate. But that is some kind of brave right now, and I think it says a lot about the attitude of this Pirates ball club right now. And short porches to right. You got a guy with nine home runs and 18 RBIs in there, a game changer, and you're challenging him on the inner half. Boy, if you go in there, you better get it in there. Now they're going away, and I mean way away. Harper takes it, even though Martin was reaching back. He was set up so far outside. Hard to believe that was a strike. Well, after the first three pitches, that pitch looked like it was in the Pirates' dugout to Bryce Harper. Three cutters into it, four seam fastball off the plate away. A pitch right down the middle would have been into the chest protector of the umpire. See where Martin jumps here. Harper can't reach it and Mark Melanson hit some serious spots with his fastball in that eighth inning. The Nats have stranded five still down two.
Some spanning. And Denard span first step quick at, quickness. A.J. Burnett right here with a line drive up the middle. Span all over it. Ross Detweiler says, yes, you're my center fielder and I like you. And this is Burnett. Got him mixed up, but another good play by Denard Spann. And Ross Detweiler says, yep, you're my center fielder and I really like you now. Roger Bernardina will stay in and play center field. And Ryan Matthews will get some work because of the starting pitching last couple of nights. Bullpen hasn't been that busy other than Rafael Soriano. The opponent's hitting 279 off Matthews this year. Right-handed hitter's just 185. And two-seam fastball, low to mid-90s. Slider and a fork to go with it. Gabby Sanchez up first. And he will rifle this one to the gap. And Gabby Sanchez is two for four. He's hitting the ball the way the Nats used to see him swing it down in Miami. Not sure what happened to him last year or the end of the 2011 season, but Gabby Sanchez getting a chance to play every day here appears to be back. Well, well, not too many times you see a right-handed hitter off Ryan Matthews get inside the baseball and hit it the other way. That'll bring in Russell Martin here. He's walked twice. Grounded out. Ninety three tailing inside. So that was Gabby Sanchez second hit in three career at bats against Matthews. Russell Martin has never faced him. That one's over to the right side and for a guy like Adam LaRoche an easy play one out. That'll bring in. Travis Snyder, the right fielder. The Potomac Nationals are at Fitzner Stadium through Sunday. So after a $1 Monday, all you can eat Wednesday. Best fireworks in minor league baseball tomorrow, and then on Sunday, the kids eat free. PotomacNationals.com. Yeah, but what do they eat free? The free popcorn? Evidently free, anything they want. Free lobster? <laughs> free filet mignon? I mean, what is it? I mean, yeah, I'm eating free, but what am I eating? They want you to come to the ballpark and find out. Snyder batted four. Brandon Edge back in the sixth inning, grounded out to the pitcher. First man retired by Craig Stammen, who, by the way, pitched two more scoreless innings tonight. Two strikeouts, a hit, 33 pitches, 21 strikes. He's becoming a star in that bullpen. Good tailing fastball by Ryan. Right to the outside edge. No balls, two strikes. Is it cotton candy? Because then, you know, got sugar overload. You know, it's too bad uh, they're leaving town. You could go Monday or Thursday and find out. You have two. You would have had two different nights to choose from. A tooth decay night after that. I mean, what are we doing there? Breaking ball low. Fastball away. Desmond can't get it. Snyder hit it extremely hard. And the Pirates have two on, one out. Boy, you just know if a lefty's going to get a fastball from Ryan Matthews, it's got to go the other way. And Snyder with a nice piece of hitting right there, staying on that two-seamer from Ryan Matthews, using that 5.5 hole. Desmond shading him up the middle. He was able to use that hole. It'll bring in Pedro Alvarez, who's 0 for 3 tonight. He will see Matthews for the first time. Yeah. 
And he was hacking at a fastball away. Nine hits, Nationals six. They've stranded six. The Nats have left five. It's been since Sunday at Cincinnati since Ryan Matthews is pitching. If you talk to sinker ball guys, guys with good two seamers, they like to pitch a lot. They like to be a little bit fatigued when they're strong. They throw that sinker through the sink. Driven the other way. Bryce Harper back at the track. He will grab it and the runners return. It is really hard for a left handed batter to go opposite field bomb here. Yeah, it was up too. And to my point right now, Ryan Matthews sinker is more of a runner and it's up in the zone. That's probably because he's too strong. And right here, Pedro Alvarez tried to show how strong he was. That's a home run, a lot of ballparks, not here at PNC. That ball was touched. Well, Pirates going for a knockout punch here. Garrett Jones will be the pinch hitter. He is 0 for 1 career with a pop up against Ryan Matthews. Then they'll use another pinch hitter. In the number nine hole next, if needed. Trying to get some insurance here. Good fastball right to the outside edge. Garrett Jones has a pinch hitter this year. One for five, two RBIs. Batting 296, home run power. He's hit three, driven in 15. Didn't get the start with Detweiler on the mound tonight. Change of the signs right there. Runner on second base for a while. Long look in there. And Matthews saw something he didn't like. He and Desmond maybe too. Call out the catcher. Mix up the sequence a little bit. Change your signs. Two on, two out. And a 1-1 one, one count. Riding fastball. You know, those Miami Hurricanes working. They'll do whatever it takes. Gabby Sanchez, a former Hurricane out there at second base. You never know. Sometimes it's nothing. A lot of guys are paranoid. They just see like a little flinch and they think there's some location being relayed or maybe some signs being given. It's better to be safe than sorry, though. Matthews throws a breaking ball. And that's Roger Bernardino waiting for it. Here we go. Top of the ninth. Zimmerman, the cleanup hitter. Adam LaRoche, who's been on twice, and Tyler Moore straight ahead.
versus Jason Grilly down by two, top of the ninth. It is time for your head and shoulders whip feature. There you go back to that matchup between Melanson and Harper. And I just feel like as we show you this, that the injury might have had something to do with Bryce Harper getting to these inside pitches. And if you saw the left side of his body where he hit the fence in Atlanta, there's a huge bruise. And it just doesn't seem like he's getting the pitches that he normally does. He was looking in there on that last fastball. He threw it away again. So trying to do whatever he can to help his ball club. But you can tell he's not quite at 100%. Infielder, new shortstop, John McDonald. Assuming it's a double switch, he would be batting ninth. Let's hope the Pirates have to bat. And batting eighth and pitching their closer, Jason Grilly, who had five career saves coming into the season. This guy's been in the big leagues off and on since 2000. He had one for the Bucks two years ago, two last year, and now he's looking for number 12 tonight. Yeah, two pitches, fastball slider, fastball's averaging 94 miles an hour this year. That's the highest average he's had in his career. This started in 2004. Ryan Zimmerman. And that is no swing, says John Hirschbeck. Ryan won for six career against the right-hander. Who's been with the Marlins. White Sox, Tigers, Rockies, Rangers. Now third season here in Pittsburgh. Zimmerman lifting it high in the air. The Nats hope the wind blows it out of play. It will by a big margin. Hitting 143, 18 strikeouts in 12 innings, four walks. The guy figuring out a lot of things at the age of 36. Zimmerman jammed and he hit it hard, got the barrel around, didn't miss the bag by much. Julie Ryan Zimmerman back with the ball club tonight. Didn't get to rehab a whole lot because of weather in Potomac. That's right. He he did miss some time, but he said of this last this recent stint in rehab, he said, you know, nobody really wants to do it, but it provided him with a little bit of a silver lining. He said that it kind of put things into perspective for him and it kind of takes you back to your roots and helps you remember what life was like before the majors and reminds you just how lucky he is to be playing at this level and to be back at this ball club. And Davey Johnson had to say that, you know, he looked good in his workout. No restrictions on him. Yeah, not many guys at high A ball throwing the ball like Jason Grilly is right now. I mean, he just drilled that fastball in there. So here's Adam LaRoche with a shift coming on. A base hit, a walk, and a run scored for Adam tonight. Nationals have scored more than two runs in one game of this road trip so far. There's the big shift that sends the third baseman over there to a second space uh, second base position near the umpire. And a 1 0 to LaRoche is in there counts even. The Nationals looking for a base runner any way they can. Loop and a bomb theory applies. That time, Gurley missing low and away. He has six consecutive saves. Mike Williams back in 02, the only other pirate to have 10 in the month of April. Two balls, one strike. LaRoche, two hit night. And for Adam, his first hit in three career at bats against the right hander Jason Grilly. And Adam is on base for the third time this evening. That'll bring in big, strong Tyler Moore. Yeah, they're digging it over there. Tying run of the plate in the form of Moore because Adam LaRoche is starting to feel a little bit. Fastball away, stays on it, stays through it. 
We talked about just keeping his shoulders square to the pitcher, not closing his front side too much. That's what he worked on in Atlanta. The process starting to take shape here in Pittsburgh. A couple of knocks, a walk. Good night for LaRoche, and the stage is set for Tyler Moore. Well, he figured he might have an over eager young hitter in there, and he threw him a breaking ball on the first one. A good slider. Great take. Almost close enough to be a called strike. Counts even one one. So hard, you know you represent the tie and run. You're gearing up to tie a ball game up and you get a couple of sliders to start the at bat. You can't get off the fastball though with the guy that throws 94. You gotta stay on it. That is upstairs, two and one. Top of the zone. Didn't get the call. There's that slider again. James Hoy called it a swing. Might have been a called strike anyway. Really has not given up a home run this year. Two outs. I think Tyler Moore was convinced he was getting another slider right here from Grilly. Got a fastball on the outer half. Per perfectly placed pitch, 93 miles an hour. Danny Espinosa, 0 for 1 career against Jason Grilly. He has the Nats only RBI tonight. And he was expecting fastball and got one. Hey, let her rip. Why not? Nats extra. Johnny Holiday, Ray Knight, as soon as this one's over. Nats trying to do something here late to turn around some struggles they've had in Pittsburgh last couple of years. Breaking ball. It sneaks in the back door. One ball and two strikes. Pitch was supposed to be elevator fastball from Grilly to Russell Martin. He threw it right down the middle. He wanted that pitch up in Danny Espinosa's eyes and he left it thigh high right down the heart of the plate. Grilly got away with one right here. Look at the target from Martin. Look where the pitch mm. was. Nationals strike out three times looking in the ninth inning, and the Pirates win game one, three to one. It's time for the key of drive of the game. We're going to go back to the fifth inning, give it to Jordy Mercer tonight. Called up. He decides to go deep. 3 1 fastball from Ross Devweiler just goes out to left field, and that's the difference in this ballgame a two run homer. 
Nice first game for Jordy Mercer. Yeah, and also Andrew McCutcheon, who hurts the Nats again. The home run hitter drove in two. McCutcheon all smiles, and the Pirates are five over 500.